which they have in the hunger strike and the hunger rally and all that stuff that we have footage of. Um, we're up here this weekend for the screening of my film Bala for You and Bala. And um, I, we were at the President Bollinger event. I was just, what was that? Reception on Wednesday night. Yeah, I wanted to say something about that. The reception uh, at Wednesday night, I actually told, I actually wanted to interview Mr. Bollinger because I didn't see him at the hunger strike at all. And I that was the most important question that I would ask. The only question I did get to ask, and I do have no camera, because I asked President Bollinger, uh, was he at the hunger strike rally at all? Because I didn't see him. And he goes, no, he wasn't there. So, um, you know, like it's different. And he, I mean, he gave some more, but I have that all on tape. Um, we have this whole weekend on tape, and it's been like wonderful, marveling experience, and everything. So, well, I mean, after this, um, I, I had deep empathy when Kanye West lost his mother so suddenly, and um, mostly because I really could relate to the fact that she and he were worked together so closely, and I'm sorry, so I know he was dozing by it. This is the first time I ever tried to work with my son on a project, and it has been more than an ocean and a challenge, but it's been so rewarding because to see him, you know, I talk about what he doesn't do, to see him, what he does do creatively and, uh, and, and intellectually and intuitively is amazing. So this is leading me to tell you what the name Bala means, because we get a lot of questions about that. So um, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it, it actually it does, we found out later. But he had me and together, we were looking on the internet, we were just making up words. He, he thought that it was best to make up a word, short and simple, that people could remember. Once you Google and the I wanted it to be one, one word, like Google. Or, you know, something that would just be catchy to the world. And next thing I found out that actually uh, that word actually exists. Um, <laughs> I thought I made it up. But um, there's actually like a Stargate character or something named Bala. Is in uh, Brazil. Right, there's a character. There's a character named Bala in Brazil. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> funny. And then in Brazil, I believe they use it, uh, a quote, but I believe they use it as saying, What's up, hey? So that worked out too. And now, and now we learned we have an editor named Raul Betancourt with Pillow Talk, and he called today, by the way, and I didn't tell you. He was so concerned because there were so many glitches with this thing, technical. But uh, we're still proud and pleased uh, with it and with him, and uh, so I will pay him the balance owed. But anyway, he said um, that did we know that Vala meant bullet? In Spanish, I said, bullet, oh my God, we're supposed to be doing a non-violent So we're supposed to be doing a non-violent movie, so I said, let's look at it this way, the shot heard around the world. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Remember that, Patrick? Yeah. Coming, to wrap this up, I think coming to this Columbia 1968 conference, whatever it's called, I think basically put the movie on the map, because now, Many of the people at this are aware of it. I was unaware. I knew the story, but I was unaware of the, the movie. And I understand there's a, a book being written, and the story in his ears, writing up some of this stuff. So a lot of people are coming together. So in that sense, you know, maybe this event didn't really serve a good purpose after all. Well, the event served a tremendous purpose. To see four or five hundred people out there last night to do to see the Thulani Davis production of, of what we were experiencing here it was fantastic. We are all just so brilliant, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what I'd like to get on. A lot of people think that, that I heard that they were thinking that SDS wanted to burn down Columbia, and some of our guys, they said they never want to come back to Columbia. They haven't been here in 40 years. Mm -hmm. I loved Barnard College, mm -hmm. the Women's School of Columbia University, mm -hmm. from the day I arrived, mm -hmm. from the day I applied to come. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to go to some kind of an independent women's school where I'd have to be in competition with the men, you know. I wasn't going to go to Wells or Smith in the woods somewhere. <laughs> I wanted to come to the big city. I had to, I could go to Howard to the black school. I said to my mother, no, there's got three million black people up in Harlem. I'm going to New York City and I'm going to Barnard College. If they accept me, if they will have me. And they did with scholarship and money. 
And, and I still always, I'm very active I'm the president of my class of 69. And it was very hurtful that I didn't get the kind of publicity from my coordinating committee here that I wanted to about this film. And even though the other films, I, I guess film is not the medium that was to be elevated here. You had to be a PhD, a speaker, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. But one of the coordinating committee said to me, she goes, Sherry, I haven't seen your film yet. I said, oh, I didn't know it was going to have to be pre-screened. What are you afraid of? I'm a born and graduate. I'm not going to do anything to harm this community. It's not going to be no X-rated, you can't look at film. So thank you for having us on your show. Too. I wanted to say about that, too. Um, the whole experience at Columbia has uh, left me with a very, uh, not a very bright perspective of what Columbia is and what it's about. So I don't have any respect for Columbia, actually. <laughs> And uh, and I'll say that because when he, when he, a few there's a few reasons because we're working on this film I just realized how much is what's really going on I mean people may take a true lesson from the film but me actually working behind the scenes and creating it seeing what's really happening from a different angle is that it, it's really a lot that's going on with this school as far as the racism and discrimination at Columbia University and uh, uh, all all the different aspects of the of the different. Um, protests that they go on. I mean, they go on and on, demonstrations, students constantly. I mean, since 68, in the 70s, and 80s, and 90s, I mean, it's, it's history on it. It goes on and how on. Did you connect, oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 How did you connect with, you as a young person, how did you connect with the students that you saw here, was at meetings with, or seen on the campus here? There's a BSO here, there must be other graduate students, uh -huh. you know, and there's did you talk to them? Did you send any cards? Did you send any numbers? You all be hooking up and whatnot? I, I spoke with uh, I spoke with a lot of students, some of the students. Uh, one of the main things I saw vividly on Columbia campuses is I see a lot of Asian students. And um, no, that's that's not to say that there's other people here, but I'm just saying I just see a lot. And there's a black, the black students that, they're, that are here, there's not too many of them and I, that I see vividly. And they're, they're sort of in the background. You have the Malcolm X Lounge. You have BSO, have boss, and all those things, but um, there's just not very much to the forefront of what's going on. This, this very blatant uh, racial differences that I see, and uh, of course with the hunger strike rally, they're talking. They were talking about the fact that the neglect of ethnic studies, Asian studies, African American studies, that hasn't been focused on. That was the main focus of the student strikers in 07, which they were starving themselves for. And um, I just thought that was amazing because, uh, you know, everyone that I saw up here was Asian. So I was like, how are you going to not teach that, you know, that in curriculum? Um, but any, anyway, also to add on to that is that since I've been at the events here, um, you know, I just add on to what my mother was saying, such a lack of respect for all the effort and time and the spent that my mother spends on this campus, on this university, by the administration, by whomever. Um, and this is not to mention the, the, the good people. There's plenty of people that helped out. I have Sam White here. There's plenty of other supportive, very supportive people.